So we're kind of running short on time, which is, and it's good that we're now to the last story. This is the, um, the sap-sucking sea slug tail, or the solar-powered solar nudibranch, or sea slug tail. So this is actually about a sacoglost, and remember I talked to you about, told you about the different groups. This is not a true nudibranch, this is a sap-sucking sea slug. And I'm going to talk about a group called Alicia. Right, so remember that the sacoglossans have these piercing teeth. So here are some of the teeth here. And they use these teeth to pierce algae, algae that are kind of like, that don't have cell walls. It's just a bunch of chloroplasts inside this. Once they pierce it, just chloroplasts and other cellular parts. So they pierce this. They suck up all of the insides. And they're what's called a kleptoplast. And that means they steal the chloroplasts from the algae. So we've had this like running theme of stealing from your prey, right? So these guys, Alicia, they actually take the organelles, they take the chloroplasts from their algal prey and put them in their body, in their digestive tissue. So this Alicia, that the, the specific species that this work, most of the work has been done on, feeds on a specific species of algae. It takes up and sequesters or holds on to its prey's chloroplasts. But the amazing thing is, not only does it take the chloroplasts, the chloroplasts continue to photosynthesize in the slug, which might be, okay, maybe it could photosynthesize for a while, but these can continue to photosynthesize because somehow, well, they continue to photosynthesize for long periods of time. And we know from the biology of the algae that the chloroplast needs proteins that the algal nucleus makes not the slug. So 90% of its needed proteins are made by the algal nucleus, the DNA in the, al in the algae. So these chloroplasts are in the, the slug, but they don't have all the genes they need to function, to need to, to photosynthesize properly. So recently it's been found that the slug genome has um, the nuclear gene that facilitates photosynthesis is found in the slug genome. And it's the same as what's found in the algal genome. So somehow, elements of the algal genome have been transferred to the slug. So genes supporting photosynthesis have been acquired by the slug via what we call horizontal gene transfer. And these encoding proteins are retargeted to the chloroplast. So this is kind of like amazing new research. And this is only one species that people have studied. I mean, there are hundreds of species of Alicia alone, which is only one genus maybe 100 species of Alicia. There's only one genus of the Sacoglossans. And so they're able to make the proteins that can keep the chloroplasts going. So we have a local species of Alicia, Alicia hedgepethi, and it eats a specific algae, and n most likely it does something very similar, but no one knows because no one's investigated more than a couple species of Alicia. Um, so the ability of nudibranchs and other epistobranchs to take up parts of their prey and use them to their own benefit is just incredible. Um, so yeah, they're able to co-op the defenses, the symbionts, the organ even the organelles of their prey and use them for their own um, benefit. And we're so lucky to live, so many of the things I showed you today are tropical, the pictures, but I tried to show a lot of local species. We're really lucky to live in a place that has this amazing diversity. And if you go tide pooling, you can see, you know, without a lot of, with some luck, but not a lot, you can see four to five species of nudibranchs. And if you're with a big group, you can see upwards of 20 on a given day. 